I spent like two weeks begging her to come home. Is it please for the emergency? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing super, super well. I missed you guys so much. As you guys know, I was a little bit MIA because I was getting some dental implants done and just some other stuff done to my mouth. It was like a whole crazy thing. So it definitely took up a lot of my time, but everything is back to normal. I'm finally back to filming. Anyways, today's video is just absolutely horrifying. That's truly the word that describes this case. Just reading about it and watching the interviews with the family and the documentary and just hearing the specific details of this case is just horrifying. Today, we're going to be talking about what happened to Ashley Wadsworth. Ashley was a young, vibrant, beautiful, smart, and just kind girl that just wanted to find love. She wanted to travel, be adventurous, and just meet the love of her life. But in reality, the man she loved was evil and would end her life. There is so much information to go over, you guys. Like, this video is probably going to be so long. And I do want to put a trigger warning because we are going to be discussing domestic violence. We're going to be discussing, you know, graphic details. And it's just like a very heavy video. Thank you guys so much for being here. I truly appreciate the support that you guys show this channel and how you guys help me spread awareness. You guys are literally the best familia ever. Real quick before we get into the video, I do do want to thank our sponsors who support this channel you know they help keep the channel going and you know support everyone that's on the team that helps make these videos possible so real quick let's thank our sponsors thank you to Kara for sponsoring today's video Kara offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research-backed ingredients and optimal doses to get started you take an online quiz explaining your goals lifestyle and values which will help Kara create a personalized plan made just for you from there you will receive your vitamins or powders straight to your door so you can begin experiencing all of their benefits. Part of my goals this year is to work on my health as well as on my confidence. When I have healthy, strong hair and glowing skin, I just feel good. So I've been taking a handful of vitamins from Care-of, ranging from keratin for hair health and nail strength, collagen for skin health, prebiotic plus for gut and immune health, and all these other vitamins that I'll put on the screen here. Everything intertwined, so if your gut is healthy, your hair and your skin are healthy. So I have just really been loving and just enjoying the benefits that these vitamins have given me. I love how simple it is to get started with care of and they also have a really cool app that helps you build a routine, track how you're feeling and will also play back insights about your results over time so that you can adjust your routine as your needs change. To get started with care of today you can click the link in the description box down below and use my code Jackie Flores for 50% off subscription items and your first order. Thank you again to care of for sponsoring today's video and supporting this channel. With that let's Let's jump right in and let's talk about today's case. Ashley Ann Wadsworth was born on July 25th, 2002 to her parents, Christy and Kenneth. Christy and Kenneth were no longer in a relationship. Kenneth had remarried and was now living with his new wife nearby. And Christy was pretty much now raising Ashley and her older sister, Haley, all by herself. The family lived in Vernon, which is a small city in British Columbia. And based on how everyone describes Vernon, it, it honestly seems like a town from like a TV show or from like a movie. You know, that typical small town where everyone knows everyone one. You know, people felt really safe there. They didn't really have to lock their doors. Like that's literally how everyone describes this town. And they all say that there really wasn't much to do there. Like after 6 p.m., you kind of just like had to hang out at your house or like go to a restaurant or like to the movies because there really wasn't anything else to do. Like there was no party scene, like bars, nothing like that. So it was really a small town, but you know, Ashley loved living there with her family and she just had a close relationship with her mom, with her sister, you know, and as well with her father you know despite him not being married anymore to their mom and you know not living with them he still tried to you know be a part of their lives and you know be active in it 
Ashley and Haley had such a beautiful relationship. They had such an amazing sister bond and they would tell each other everything. As for Ashley, she was just absolutely gorgeous. Like she had these big, beautiful blue eyes. I mean, they were like popping. Like looking at photos of her, the first thing that I noticed was her eyes. Like they're just like out there. They are just absolutely gorgeous. And you know, she was beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Christy says that Ashley was pretty much like the backbone for the family. You know, she was the one that kept everyone together. She was the strong one. She had the most courage, had the most energy, and would just encourage the family to get together and do things, you know, like bond, hang out, and just spend quality time with each other. She was also really into sports, so she did tennis. She often would go hiking with her friends and family. She enjoyed going off-roading, horseback riding, skiing and boating so she had a lot of energy like as you can tell because all of those activities are a lot you know she was just very adventurous and along with that she was also really into school so she took her studies very seriously and she also played the clarinet her dream when she grew up was to move out of vernon and become a lawyer as i mentioned vernon is just such a small town so even though ashley loved living there she just knew that her future wasn't there that she needed to get out of there to become a lawyer and just live this full and adventurous life. Her friends say that she was also very welcoming to new people at their school. So if there was like a new like international student that attended the school or just like someone that moved into the neighborhood, she would talk to them, you know, make them feel welcomed. And she just wanted to make sure that everyone felt invited and that no one was ever lonely. So now let's fast forward to when Ashley was 12 years old. At this point, Ashley really wanted a cell phone. It was something that she kept begging her mom she kept begging her like please like get me a cell phone like I just want to get one to talk to my friends but her mom just didn't really see the point in it I mean Ashley was never really alone like it's not like she was like out and about and like needed a cell phone and if she was the town was just so small that if Ashley did you know have a problem she could just talk to anybody in the town and all of them knew her home phone all of them knew her family so if she needed help there would be a way to contact her family so you know with all of that together Christy was just like I don't really see the point in you getting a cell phone but she did allow Ashley to use the family's laptop so that she could log on to Facebook to you know see what her friends were doing what everyone was talking about to message her friends and just like keep up to date with what was going on so with Facebook and I feel like this also maybe applies to like other social media platforms but like my specific memory is with Facebook. I feel like back then when Facebook was like popping it was so common to just like add people that you didn't know. So like for example if I had like a friend Lily and she had a friend named Mike I would add Mike to my Facebook even though I didn't know him like I never physically met him or even spoke to him but I would add him because I'd be like oh well like my friend Lily knows him. Like you know what I mean like you would just add like friends of a friend. So it was like a very common thing to do back then and this is something that Ashley would do on her Facebook. She would add friends of her friends, you know, people that she didn't really know, but she would add them, they would accept her friend request, and then they would just talk on Facebook. So in 2015, when Ashley was 12 years old, she added a teenager named Jack Seppel on Facebook. Now, Jack was 15 years old and he did not live in Canada. In fact, he lived all the way in London in a town called Chelmsford, which I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm so sorry. The way that she found him was through a mutual friend. So again, a friend of a friend. Now, a little backstory on Jack. You know, people describe him as just being very withdrawn, quiet, and isolated. He was someone that didn't really have a social life. He didn't have a lot of friends. It's not like he was out and about partying and like going to, you know, hang out. He basically spent all of his time online chatting with people on Facebook or playing his Xbox. Jack and Ashley had a three and a half year age gap. Again, she was 12 at this time and Jack was 15. So the two of them started talking on Facebook and it was pretty much like a pen pal situation at the start. They would just message about their life, about their family, about what was going on in school. They were talking about very innocent things at the beginning and just basically getting to know each other. They continued talking for some time and then after a few months of speaking to each other, Ashley started to bring up Jack to members of her family. So she told her mom about Jack, she told her sister, she she told her dad when Christy first heard that her daughter was speaking to a boy that lived all the way in London and that they were only speaking through the internet and that he was three years older than her. Of course, she was worried. I mean, I feel like any parent would be that way. They'd be like, huh? 
Like, what do you mean you're speaking to, like, a boy on the internet that lives in another country and is three years older than you? Like, I'm trying to picture myself at 12 years old telling my parents this, you know, telling my Hispanic parents this. And I feel like they would have just immediately freaked out and just, like, shut that down in that moment. And, you know, that's how Christy felt. She was like, what is going on? Who is this person? How did you meet him? And she was honestly worried that her daughter was being catfished. So she was very cautious about the situation because she felt like her daughter wasn't actually speaking to a 15 year old boy named jack she figured that it was some like 50 year old man like a creepy guy in his basement pretending to be this teenage boy from london and was acting as like an online predator so she was really worried about that but then eventually ashley and jack started to facetime each other so now ashley was video chatting with this guy and actually seeing his face matching it to what was on his facebook profile and this made christy feel a little bit better because now she was speaking to him and could see that he was a real teenage boy and not a catfish. Ashley and Jack would FaceTime so much that she would actually pass the phone to members of her family saying, you know, hey, here's Jack, you know, say hello to him. And Christy and Haley would say hi to him. Jack would say hi back and ask, you know, how everything's going. So they started to get to know Jack a little bit more. Christy says that she would talked to Jack a couple of times and that she even told him, you know, I love your accent. You know, how are you doing? How's your mom doing? So yeah, this friendship seemed to be blossoming. It seemed to be growing. And like I said, at this point, it seemed like it was only a friendship. As their friendship continued to grow, Christy was still, you know, cautious about this. She was still worried about this friendship she honestly thought that this was going to fizzle out that eventually jack was going to give up speaking to someone that lived all the way in canada or you know vice versa and that you know in a few months they would stop speaking to each other and this would be all over with however she was wrong ashley and jack's friendship started to blossom and get more serious jack would even send ashley gifts so he would send her gifts all the way to canada he would get her clothes he would sometimes send her money he would get her teddy bears jewelry and he even got her a handbag. So to the family, it definitely seemed like this friendship was turning into something else. One of Ashley's friends, who honestly is probably her best friend named Tiana, spoke out and said that Ashley and Jack had a connection that no one understood. She says that Ashley was just falling in love with this guy and that she dreamed of finally meeting him in person one day, which honestly seemed so hard because, you know, Ashley was 12 years old when she started speaking to Jack, which is definitely not an appropriate age to like hop on a plane and go fly to London to meet this boy that you met on the internet. So she knew that if she was going to meet Jack in person one day, they were going to have to wait and it was going to take some time. When Ashley was 15 years old in 2018, she felt like she was ready to do this. You know, she was ready to go to London and meet this man that she had been talking to for the past three years. So she asked her parents, hey, can I go to London? And of course, the parents were like, no, <laughs> like you're not going to London forget about it, like don't even ask again, which of course, like I said, is so reasonable. I mean, she was only 15 years old, so I still feel like that's way too young to just pack up your stuff and like go meet this guy. So Christy was like, nope, there's no way you're gonna go see this boy. And of course, Ashley was upset about this, but she knew that she just needed to wait a little bit more, that once she was 18, she was gonna be able to go without anyone stopping her because she would legally be an adult. So all she had to do was continue to wait and continue to speak to Jack online. Line. Friends and family state that Jack and Ashley's friendship didn't really turn serious until she was 16 years old. This is when they feel like the friendship finally turned romantic. Their romantic relationship seemed to be going okay, but then soon things started to turn a little bit rocky. Ashley and Josh started to fight a lot. Jack just started to become very jealous. Like he was scared that Ashley was speaking to other people on Facebook and he was especially worried about what she was doing offline. You know, what she was doing in person with like other boys, if she was speaking to boys or she was having crushes on them. It was just getting very overwhelming and Ashley would get frustrated with this. You know, she would be like, what what is going on? Why are you so angry? And why are you so jealous? And at times she would even block Jack because she was just over it. And then Jack would make like a new Facebook account to message her. And if Ashley didn't reply to him on his new Facebook account, he would actually message Ashley's sister Haley or message some of her friends being like, hey, Ashley is ignoring me. Can you get her to call me back? This obsessive and just controlling behavior really started to concern Ashley's friends and family. I mean, this is not normal to be dealing with this at 15 you know 16 years old you should not be dealing with someone that's trying to control you and trying to 
tell you who to talk to and how to dress and how to like handle yourself. It's just not okay. So they started to talk to Ashley about this and they were like, what is going on? Why is he acting this way? But Ashley would defend Jack and she would just explain that everything was fine, to not worry, that he was just a really passionate person with like a really good heart and that's why he was acting this crazy. However, Ashley's best friend Tiana was just not buying this. She did not like Jack and she told Ashley how she felt. And then Ashley would tell Jack that her best friend Tiana didn't like him, which then made him dislike Tiana and it just turned into like this whole crazy thing. What's even more disturbing and just honestly insane is that Jack was so scared that Ashley was cheating on him and having crushes and speaking to boys but at the same time he was cheating. Yeah, he was literally seeing other women in London and speaking to other people online. So he was just this big lying cheater. I feel like when people are always worried about you cheating and are always questioning you, it's them projecting. You know, I feel like it's because they're the cheater. They're worried about getting caught. So they keep projecting onto you saying that you're the cheater, that you're doing something wrong. When in reality, they're the bad ones. So I feel like this is exactly what Jack was doing. I mean, he was cheating. He was not a good person. He was lying to Ashley. So because he felt guilty about it, he was just like projecting onto her and making her seem like the bad person. Now, some articles made it seem like Ashley knew about his infidelity. However, I wasn't able to find anything confirming that. So I'm not sure if Ashley knew about this. I also don't know if at this point her family and friends knew about his infidelity. Either way, the friends and family were just not a fan of Jack anymore, especially Tiana. She just felt like something was off about him. So she kept telling Ashley, you know, please get rid of him, break up with him, him. Like, let's just move on from this guy. But Ashley would just continue to tell her that everything was okay. She would forgive Jack after their horrific fights. And to her, it just felt like his apologies were genuine, you know, that they were heartfelt and that he did really love her. He kept telling Ashley that things would be perfect again and that everything would go back to normal and that, you know, once they finally saw each other in person, everything would be okay. So not only would he apologize, but he would also send Ashley gifts as a way to manipulate her and convince her that this really was true love. So Ashley and Jack continue in this rocky relationship. And when Ashley turned, I believe 17 or 18 years old, she started to get part-time jobs. So she was working at McDonald's, Burger King, a Chinese restaurant, and just like some other odd jobs to get her own money. She was able to purchase an iPad for herself. So now she didn't have to use a family laptop to speak to Jack anymore. During this time, she also became a Mormon and she had also been accepted at Thomas Rivers University in Kamloops, British Columbia. She was really excited to go to this university because, you know, her dream was to become a lawyer and she was just so ready for this change. However, in in 2020, she actually deferred her enrollment and decided to take a gap year. Ashley figured that this gap year was the perfect time for her to travel to England and finally meet her boyfriend Jack in person. At this point, she had graduated high school. She was an adult. She had her own money. So she felt like she was finally able to do this and that she didn't need to depend on her parents to help her out. When she told her parents about this plan, of course, they were not happy. Her father was like, huh? No way, like you're not going to the UK to meet this boy. It's not gonna happen. And Ashley told her dad, well, I'm going. I have my own money. I'm an adult. So you're either with me or you're not. I immediately said, no way. And uh, well, I'm gonna go no matter what. So you're either with me or against me. So I said, okay, I'm with you. Start, save up your money and you go, go have fun. So her dad was like, I mean, okay, I guess I'd rather be supportive than like have her shut me out or fight about this. So he agreed to the plan. As for Ashley's mom and sister, they were also not happy about this plan. But again, she was an adult. She was going to be paying for this trip with her own money. So the family just felt like there really wasn't much that they could do to stop her. Oh, she was so excited to go to England. This was the trip of a lifetime for her. Christy was thinking to herself... Okay, I mean, I guess the worst that can happen is that she'll go to London, she'll meet Jack, realize that this isn't, you know, the perfect dream and the relationship that she wanted, and then she'll just come back home. That's it. Then when she comes back home, we'll all eventually move on from this in a couple of months, and that's where this story will end. She never thought that her daughter going to London 
would end in her murder. So once Haley, Christy, and her father, Kenneth, were on board, Ashley started to pack her bags and, you know, get everything ready for her trip to London. Christy says that she reached out to Jack and told him that she's sending her baby over to him to protect her and to take care of her. Jack replied to her and said, yes, don't worry. I'll guard her with my life. I'll keep her safe. I promise. And I said to him, you know, Jack, I said, I'm sending you my baby, so please take care of her. As she's, I'm trusting you with her. And he said, yeah, I'll guard her with my life. I'll keep her safe. I promise. I said, okay. Ashley continued getting everything ready and she ended up getting a six month tourist visa. And then on November 12th, 2021, at the age of 19, Ashley said goodbye to her family at the airport and started her journey to London. When she was on the plane, she posted this Snapchat video showing her seat, showing the little TV screen. She was showing her snacks, her magazines, and she was just talking about how excited she was to finally be going to London. After a long day of traveling, Ashley was finally in London and was finally meeting face to face with Jack. Jack met her at the airport and then from there they started heading back to his house. Ashley immediately texted her family letting them know that she was with Jack in person and from that moment the two of them just started posting so many photos and videos of them together on Facebook. So Ashley's family and friends felt better after seeing these photos and seeing all of these videos because they could tell that she was genuinely happy and that the two of them were traveling around London, you know, going to tourist spots, you know, it just looked like they were genuinely enjoying themselves and actually happy. So the family was like, great, Ashley's happy. She's having a good time with Jack. She's safe. Everything's going well. Like, yay. Despite the photos, you know, making it seem like Ashley was happy, the family, of course, still wanted to know how she truly felt. So they would often message her and, you know, call her asking her what was going on. And Ashley told them that she was just the happiest she had ever been, that Jack was an extremely kind and warm person and just made her feel so welcomed and loved. For the next six months, Ashley was going to be living in Jack's home, which was a flat in Chelmsworth. They also ended up getting a cat together named Winston, so they would post a lot of photos with their new cat. They would post photos, you know, eating together, and again, everything just seemed to be going well. Since Ashley was on a tourist visa, she was not able to work, and Jack also did not have a job. So, you know, he was basically at the house all day. It's not like he had to leave to go to work anywhere, and it's not like he really had any friends. His mom, Tracy, did live nearby, so Ashley and Jack would often go visit Tracy. Jack also had a sister named Nadia that he was really close to. As for his father, I believe he passed away in 2019 and they did not have a good relationship with each other. And then he also has a brother whom he also does not speak to. So besides his mom, Tracy, and his sister, Nadia, Jack really didn't really have any friends or any type of social life. While at the beginning of this journey, Ashley and Jack were traveling to different areas and, you know, exploring the city and just out and about, that slowly started to fade. Now, the two of them were basically at home all day long, which made the family feel weird because they were like, okay, she's in London, like she should be exploring every single day or like going to a coffee shop or just like walking around. But instead, she was just at home watching TV or, you know, making TikToks while Jack was playing Xbox. Ashley did want to go on walks and she did want to do stuff, but Jack just wanted to stay inside, smoke weed, and play video games. Now, Ashley's sister Haley just did not feel good about this. She wanted her sister Ashley to be having a good time on this trip. And the fact that Jack just wasn't taking her out to any dinners or any dates, he wasn't buying her flowers anymore or just doing nice things for her just made her feel concerned for her sister's like sanity. Because again, at the beginning of their friendship, Jack would often send Ashley gifts and give her money and buy her teddy bears and all of this stuff. So he he was giving her so much love at the beginning of the relationship, but now that she was finally there in person in London living with him, 
he just wasn't doing anything. Before Ashley left to London, a couple of her friends from her church back at home had connected her to some other missionaries that were going to be in London at the same time as her. So that way she could make plans with them and, you know, meet up and have friends over there. So Ashley told Jack that she wanted to make plans with some of these friends from the church, but he immediately shut that down. He was like, no, you're not going to be going out with these people. You are not making friends and you're also not going to attend Sunday service, which again is just just so sad the fact that he was basically just isolating Ashley and just making sure that she didn't speak to anybody even even with people from her church it's just extremely sad that Ashley had to deal with this and that she had to like follow these rules as I said everything was just really rocky but then out of nowhere, Jack would turn nice again and he would try to fix everything. He would tell Ashley that he wanted to go travel to Canada to meet her friends and family, which then of course would make Ashley so happy. He was just very manipulative. In December of 2021, an ambulance was actually called to the flat that Jack and Ashley shared. Jack had overdosed and he was actually taken to the hospital with Ashley. It honestly seemed like Jack had tried to end his own life. However, the family feels like he did this to get attention and sympathy from Ashley, you know, to basically make her stay because he was so fragile and just like so emotional. So they just feel like in a way this was a way to manipulate her into being like, oh my gosh, I can't leave. Like I have to stay there for Jack. Unfortunately, the emotional abuse would soon turn physical. On Boxing Day, which was just six weeks after Ashley had arrived to London, Jack had smacked Ashley because he found out that she had these two British phone numbers on her phone blocked and that she had blocked these numbers about two years ago. So he thought that these phone numbers belonged to men and he just got so angry and smacked her. He actually texted his mother Tracy and explained to her what had happened. And Tracy replied saying, quote, that's no reason to lay a hand on her, which a lot of people find upsetting. You know, they don't really like the answer that Tracy gave back. They feel like Tracy should have stepped in and told Ashley to leave or that she should have called Ashley's parents to let them know what had happened, which is just so hard because Jack is at this point 23 years old. So maybe the mom felt like he was an adult and that she shouldn't get involved in his business. But I don't know. I just feel like if your son is telling you that he just physically hit his girlfriend, there has to be something that you do to stop this from happening again or to protect his girlfriend. So a lot of people are just not happy with Jack's mom. The emotional abuse continued as well and he started to get so controlling that he wanted to monitor all of Ashley's text messages, phone calls, emails, and all of her social media platforms. So he basically was like, give me your password to TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, everything. And Ashley agreed. She even texted her friend Tiana back at home and said, be careful what you say, he's watching. And then as soon as Tiana read this message, Ashley erased the messages from her phone. That way, if Jack looked through the messages, he wouldn't find that. Tiana was just so confused at this message. She was like, what is going on? Now he's controlling your social media. Now he's controlling your text messages and your phone calls. Like, that's not okay. Tiana just kept telling Ashley that she did not like Jack and that she felt like he was not a good person and that he was becoming toxic and controlling. I'm not sure if Jack read these messages of Tiana saying this by accident. You know, maybe Ashley forgot to delete them or if Ashley told him, you know, what she was saying. But Jack started to hate Tiana. He even left this voicemail that is just absolutely frightening. Like just hearing it made me so emotional because we're just listening to this message through the screen. But Ashley had to endure this anger in person. I'll play a little clip of it in here. I don't want to play the whole thing. Oh, my turn back on me back. This thing in my f I'm going to It's But in the voicemail, he was basically talking about how he's going to lose his temper, how Tiana is driving him crazy, and how he was going to murder Tiana. Yeah, he literally said that he's going to murder Tiana just because she has been telling Ashley that he is becoming toxic and controlling. So he's mad that Tiana is saying that he's not a good guy, that he's toxic. But yet he's acting that way. Like he's literally acting toxic and controlling. So it just doesn't make sense. And that voicemail is just absolutely disturbing. When Tiana heard it, she was really shocked and she was scared, you know, not for herself, 
but for her best friend, Ashley. On January 11th, 2022, Ashley had FaceTimed her sister, Haley, because she and Jack had just gotten into a terrible fight. Jack had actually smashed a glass cup over Ashley's head. Yeah, that's just absolutely disturbing. So Ashley FaceTimed her sister, Haley, to explain the situation, and she was crying. Haley freaked out, and she told her sister to come back and to leave Jack, but... Ashley just continued to defend him and she said that everything was going to be okay, that he apologized, that he felt bad, and that he regretted hitting her. She also begged Haley to not tell her parents about this and Haley agreed to keep this a secret. However, a few weeks later, there was another physical incident and this is when Haley said, enough is enough and she finally went to tell her mom about what was actually going on of how the relationship was turning toxic and how ashley was being abused as soon as christy heard about the physical violence she reached out to her daughter ashley and asked her you know what is going on but she says that ashley was just super evasive towards those questions and just kept telling her mom that she was fine that everything was okay and that she didn't want to go back everyone just kept telling ashley like please just come back everything's gonna be okay no one's gonna be mad at you but Haley honestly believes that Jack was probably manipulating her sister into believing that everything was okay, that she didn't need to go back home to her family, that the relationship was going to work out, and that he was going to change, and that he regretted, you know, treating her so badly. And at this point, Ashley is just so vulnerable that she's probably believing it, and she also probably wanted to have hope that the man that she had fallen in love with was actually a good person and would actually change. Unfortunately, Jack did not change and on february 1st 2022 he committed a terrible crime at around 8 30 in the morning ashley ran over to her neighbor's house screaming and knocking on the door the neighbor named helen opened up the door and said that ashley was just standing there and just looked completely terrified ashley had no shoes on she had a cut on her hand and her phone was smashed to pieces helen asked her what's going on what happened and that's when ashley explained that she had just been beaten up by jack and that the kid kitten that they shared named Winston had been thrown against the wall. It's so incredibly sad and as soon as Helen heard this she told Ashley you know we need to call the police like we need to get them to calm this guy down. However Ashley did not want to get the police involved. Instead she asked Helen if she could use her phone to call her sister Haley to explain to her what had happened because again Jack had smashed her phone so she had no way to contact her family. So she takes Helen's phone she calls Haley and explains to her what just happened. This was just absolutely shocking for Haley to hear and she told her sister that she needed to come home now. And this is when Ashley finally agreed to leave Jack and go back to her family. Helen told her mom about this and you know the rest of the family about what was going on. And that's when her grandmother booked Ashley a flight to come back home on February 3rd, which was two days away. Now the reason they had to book the flight that was two days away is because during this time was a pandemic. So in order for Ashley to get back home, she needed to take a COVID test which sometimes takes a couple of days to schedule and it also takes a couple of days to get the results back. So the soonest that Ashley was able to fly back was going to be in two days. The family even got in contact with Jack and explained to him that Ashley was leaving, that her flight was booked, and Christy even told him, you know, if you hurt my daughter again or if she doesn't make it on the plane, I will call the cops on you. Christy says that Jack was calm on the phone, that he even agreed to take Ashley to get her COVID test, and that he even agreed to take her to the airport. Going back to Helen, she even went to go speak with Jack as well and he apologized to her for the disturbance. He apologized to Ashley for hitting her and for injuring their cat. Helen says that he just seemed very calm and he just reassured her that everything was okay and that there was no need to contact the police. So since Ashley didn't want to get the police involved and neither did Jack, the neighbor Helen did not call the police. After this, from around 11 a.m. to noon, Ashley was texting her friend Tiana as well as a couple of other friends, asking them for help and, you know, just explaining what was going on. However, it was 11 a.m., you know, in London, but all the way back home where her friends and family lived, it was about 3.30 in the morning. So a lot of these friends did not see these text messages until they woke up later that morning. So when Tiana eventually woke up, she saw all of these messages from 
from Ashley and she was just freaking out. So she started calling Ashley but received no response. She texted Ashley but again received no response. As for Ashley's family, when they woke up later that morning, they also saw that they had so many messages from Ashley and they started to call and text her but just as Tiana, they received no response. They started to get worried so they contacted Jack because they were concerned about what was going on. But Jack was also not answering the phone. So at this point, the family was starting to freak out because, I mean, Jack and Ashley had just gotten in this horrific, you know, physical and just emotional fight and the family was just getting so worried so they ended up reaching out to one of Ashley's friends from the Mormon church in London. I believe the friend's name is Jamie. So they asked Jamie to go to Jack and Ashley's flat to see what was going on. Jamie agreed and she went to the flat with I believe two other people from the church and when they got to the house everything was pretty quiet. They knocked on the door but received no response. However, they could hear that someone was inside the house. Like they could hear a little bit of movement going on. So they were like, okay, it seems like someone is home, but yet no one's answering the door. So this is when the friends started to get really concerned and they decided to call the police. Police eventually arrive at the flat and they start knocking on the door, but also receive no response. They continue knocking and knocking and then they even look through the windows and that's when they can see that someone is literally inside the house. So they shout out, you have five seconds to open up before we knock the door down. We know you're in there. We see you. Despite this warning, whoever was inside continue to ignore the police so this is when they were like okay time to break down the door the officers walk inside and ashley and jack's bedroom was like right there so they open up the bedroom and that's when they see that jack is lying on the bed next to Ashley's deceased body. Not only is Jack lying next to his deceased girlfriend, but he's also on FaceTime with his sister Nadia, showing her Ashley's body. Yeah, he was on FaceTime showing her dead body. It's just insane. So police yell at him to get up, get off the bed, and they ask Jack what happened. And that's when he says, quote, I went psychotic. I'm sorry. I strangled her and stabbed her. He explained that this happened a few hours ago and that he had also taken a lot of drugs. Paramedics are also on the scene and they take Ashley's body out to the front yard and they start doing whatever they can to save her. But unfortunately, it was just too late and Ashley was declared dead. So at this point, Ashley's body is being sent to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy to be conducted. And in the meantime, police are still at the flat gathering evidence. They start searching the bedroom, the living room, everywhere, and they end up finding some blood jack's video games. So this indicated to police that after he had murdered his girlfriend, he played a video game. Which, what? Like, there's really no words to even describe how disturbing that is. They also ended up finding the murder weapon, which was a kitchen knife that was found behind a radiator. They also went through jack's phone, and they ended up finding this video that I'm just like, what? Like, this is insane. Like, this guy is actually crazy. So he made this video of himself sitting down in front of his bed with Ashley's body in the background. In the video, he was covered in Ashley's blood and he was apologizing to Haley for murdering her sister. He was making this video to send to Haley, to send to the family member of the person he had just killed. It's actually insane that he thought that this was okay. You know, he's literally filming himself with Ashley's body in the background. I don't know what the heck he was thinking, you know, sending this video to Haley because it's absolutely horrifying for someone to see this. I don't think he ever actually sent the video or if Haley even saw the video, you know, during the trial, which I mean, hopefully she did not have to watch this because it's crazy. Now, this video was recorded at about 12.45 p.m., which indicates to police that, that somewhere between 11.30 and, you know, 12.45 p.m., Jack committed this terrible crime. Detectives also discovered that after he committed this crime, Jack updated his Facebook profile photo to a photo of him and Ashley. And then he put it with a caption that said, forever mine, which detectives just feel like is absolutely sick. The fact that he killed her and then went on Facebook to upload this photo of them together and then put that as a caption, knowing that Ashley was dead at this point and that 
he had done this terrible thing and just was acting as if nothing had happened. Not only was he playing video games after doing this, he was also on Facebook. It's just when they looked at Ashley's phone, they discovered that she had this secret folder where she would put videos and photos documenting all of the bruises and injuries that Jack would leave her. I'm not going to put those photos or those videos in this video because it's just extremely graphic and there's just... We don't need to see that. It was in the documentary though, and it's just really sad seeing her covered in bruises and just sitting there all sad, videotaping herself. It just, it breaks your heart. So Ashley's autopsy revealed that she had over 90 stab wounds to her chest area, and she also had some defensive wounds on her wrist. And it's believed that Jack attacked her in their bed, strangled her, and then stabbed her over 90 times. Like that number is something else. That's a huge number. That's just absolute overkill. So while all of this is going on, you know, arresting Jack, collecting evidence, doing the autopsy, etc. Police are working on how to inform her family. At the same time, Ashley and Jack's neighbor, Helen, the one that had witnessed the disturbance earlier that morning, was finally back at home and she saw that police were there, that Ashley was dead, and that all of this crazy stuff had happened. And she was just absolutely heartbroken. She was thinking to herself, oh my God, literally just a few hours ago, Ashley was on my doorstep asking me for help and I didn't call the police. Which again, I'm not blaming the neighbor at all. I mean, it's a very scary situation to be in and it's just so difficult to know what decision to make in that moment, especially because Ashley was telling her not to call the police and because Jack was, you know, apologizing and said that everything was okay. I don't blame the neighbor. A lot of people do blame the neighbor and are very mean to her, but I don't know. I just, I'm sure that every single day she regrets not calling the police in that moment. Helen just felt so bad and she knew that she had to tell the family about what happened. So since Ashley had used her phone earlier to call Haley, Helen decided to call Haley herself and inform her of what had happened to her sister. Haley says that she picked up the phone and that Helen told her, oh my God, Ashley's been stabbed. I think she's dead. After receiving this horrifying phone call, Ashley, Haley informed the rest of her family. And at first, Christy didn't want to believe that this was true. You know, she was still holding on to hope that you know, the neighbor was wrong and that maybe Ashley was okay, that she was at the hospital being treated. Then she received a phone call from the police in London who confirmed that Ashley was in fact dead and that Jack had killed her. The family just couldn't believe it. I mean, she was just two days away from finally coming home and escaping this terrible, evil man. And they believed because she was leaving and, you know, she had ended things with Jack, that that's why he did this because he was so controlling, so abusive, so manipulative and possessive over her that the thought of her leaving forever made him think, okay, if I can't have her, no one can. Ashley's family flew to London to identify her body and just get everything ready for her to be flown back to her family. While they waited for that to happen, there was a vigil held for Ashley and over 150 people attended this vigil. Haley read this message at the vigil and it said, quote, my beautiful sister, you have done amazing things, honey. You care so much for your family. You always put us first. I'm so happy we were so close and grew up together and spent almost every day of our lives together. I don't think I almost ever went a day without talking to you. I love you so much. I'll never stop missing you. I keep seeing you and I know you're here watching out for me. God gained another beautiful angel. I love you so much, baby girl. Gosh, just reading that statement and just listening to it is so incredibly hard because, I mean, I have two sisters. So just thinking about this happening to one of them or to anybody that I love and care about is so heartbreaking. So many people showed up to support Ashley's family and they left flowers and little gifts for Ashley and messages. And, you know, everyone was saying that they were not going to stop showing up and, you know, fighting for justice. Going back to Jack, as I mentioned, he was arrested once police arrived at the scene. And when he was taken to the police station to be interviewed, he was just so serious and just very silent. Anytime police asked him a question, he would just reply with no comment which is so frustrating. And there's literally video footage of him admitting to this crime. Like he literally filmed an apology video. So I don't understand why he kept saying no comment to everything. And I don't understand if he thought that he was gonna get away with this or what his game plan was. 
But yeah, he just kept saying no comment to literally everything. Ashley's family was worried that he was going to try to claim like insanity and just claim that he wasn't like mentally well and that that was going to help him get like a lesser sentence. So the family was just really worried that he was just going to go that route and that the court was going to allow it. The trial eventually begins and the prosecution had a very strong case. As I mentioned, there was this video footage of him admitting to committing this crime. He apologized for it. He even told the police when they first broke down the door exactly what had happened. So there was just a lot of evidence against him. And at this trial, it was also revealed that Jack had a previous criminal history. It turns out that he had previous convictions that included harassment, violating restraining orders, stalking, and that he had even assaulted his own mother. Yeah, his own mom, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy actually had a restraining order against him in 2014 because he had dragged her on the floor during an argument. The restraining order banned him from approaching his mother's house and then it expired in 2019. After it expired, it seemed like Tracy and Jack like worked on their relationship and were back to normal. One of his ex-partners actually came out after hearing about Ashley's death and told police that he was just a very unpredictable, jealous, and insecure man. She explained to the police that Jack had once put his hands around her throat because she told him that she wanted to end their relationship. When Ashley's family heard all of this, they were just in shock. They had no idea that Jack had this violent and aggressive criminal history and that he had committed all of these terrible crimes against other women. Ashley didn't know about any of this either and they feel like if they had been informed about Jack's criminal history from the beginning, they of course would have never allowed Ashley to continue speaking to him on Facebook and then of course they would have never allowed her to get on that plane and go see him in London. Jack tried defending himself in the trial by claiming that he had gone psychotic. However, the toxicology reports done on him found that only cannabis and a therapeutic dose of his anti-anxiety medication were in his system. And they also conducted a psychiatric assessment on him to determine if he was fit to, you know, stand trial. And they determined that he was fit. So in the end, he pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 23 years and six months, which he must serve before he can be eligible for parole. So yeah, when he's, what is that? When he's like 46 years old, he will be eligible for parole, which does not make the family feel good at all. I mean, why does he get the chance to go on parole and like start his life again when he literally took Ashley's life away? It just doesn't seem fair to them and they're just hoping that when the time comes, he won't get out. The judge that sentenced Jack said, quote, you are a dangerous individual. You committed a brutal and cowardly attack. Again, the reason why everyone believes Jack did this is because he was losing control over Ashley and just didn't want her to leave. Jack did offer an apology to Ashley's family, which was delivered through his lawyers. And he basically said that there is no excuse as to why he did this, but that his intrusive thoughts won and have a big effect on his thinking and on his actions. In regards to the sentencing, Christy was happy that he got time but at the same time she's like this isn't gonna bring Ashley back yeah at least it'll prevent him from hurting another woman and putting another family through this pain but at the end of the day Ashley is gone forever Christy did make an impact victim statement and said that the family's birthdays and holidays will always remain a constant source of pain because there will always be an empty seat at the table she also added quote this is a nightmare that thanks to you Jack we will never wake up from. Ashley's passion and love for Jack would ultimately cost her her life. Ashley's father, Kenneth, also addressed Jack directly and said, Jack, you need to know and accept the brutality of what you've done and the never-ending pain that you have caused my family. It is because of your choices I hope you sit and think long and hard about what you've done. Ashley's family doesn't really blame, you know, Jack's mom and his sister for letting this happen, but they just wonder, you know, why they kind of protected him for so long because he did have this criminal history, you know, of assaulting and violating restraining orders in the past and even assaulting his own mom. So the family is like, why did they continue to allow him to be a part of their life? Why did they continue to allow him to date other women? Why didn't they warn Ashley? Why didn't they warn her family or do more to save her? In regards to Tracy, Christy says, quote, she didn't take the knife and kill Ashley. 
I know that. I don't think she thought he would murder her. But if your child has mental health issues and they attempt suicide, and show signs of violence in their relationship intervene it's a lesson i have to live with every day it's just all so incredibly sad and the family just feels broken by what happened to ashley and they're just so mad that they had no idea about his violent history now the family says that they wish that they would have been aware of claire's law before ashley even traveled to meet jack in london now claire's law was designed to deal with this pretty much exact situation. It allows the police to disclose the criminal history of convicted abusers if they believe potential victims are at risk. Now, this law was named after Claire Wood, who in 2009 was killed by her partner, a man that police knew was violent. Like they knew he was a bad guy. You know, he had served time in prison in the past for harassing and he even held a woman at knife point at one point. So police were just like, yeah, this guy is bad. So this law was made after Claire's death to, again, allow police to disclose a criminal history of, of these convicted abusers. So Christy was like, well, if I had known that Claire's law existed, I totally would have made a request to learn more about Jack and see what was going on with him. Ashley's family just feels like there has to be an easier and simpler way to view criminal records just through a simple web browser search not to have to like get in touch with the police and ask for permission and ask for records they just feel like this information should be open to the public because people should know about these violent abusers and about their history they honestly just want people to learn from ashley's story and they just want to spread awareness on domestic violence and abusive relationships they warn people you know if you feel like something isn't right please act on it. If someone is telling you that they're being abused and then they try to tell you that everything's okay, that they can handle it, don't listen to them. Report it. Call the police. Get them help. Don't just be a bystander. Ashley's father, Kenneth, said, quote, If you know in your gut that your sister, your friend, your aunt, your mom, or your daughter is in a situation or a relationship like that, then definitely call the police and intervene. Step in. Ladies, look at the person before you date them. Use your wits and be aware. Now, the family did participate in a documentary that was released in March of 2023, which was part of a series about social media murders. I forget where you can watch the documentary, but I will link it down below so you guys can watch it if you want to. You can hear directly from Ashley's family, from the police, from the neighbor, from her friends. It was just really emotional, you know, listening to all of this, and it just breaks your heart to listen to what Ashley had to endure before her death. The family was talking about, you know, how the most dangerous time for a victim of domestic violence is when they decide to end the relationship and actually leave. So in order to help them and, you know, protect them in this very vulnerable moment, it's important to call the police, have them help the victim pack up their belongings, and then ask the police if they could escort them out of there safely. They said, you know, it's too late to save Ashley, but it's not too late to save yourself or someone you love. I'm going to link in the description box down below some resources for domestic violence in the US and in the UK if you or someone you know is going through something similar like this. There are resources and there are people that can help you. What happened to Ashley just made the police force in the UK think about how they approach domestic violence and what they can do to improve this. The Essex police say that they have reorganized the way that they deal with this and that they just want to stop something similar from ever happening happening again. The police force has changed the way that they identify domestic abuse perpetrators and they believe that this new approach could flag up high-risk partners and catch them before they kill someone. Hopefully they continue to make these changes to improve the system and you know hopefully other countries do this as well because this just needs to stop you guys like this is just heartbreaking you know hearing these stories over and over again it's exhausting and you know just realizing that there were so many signs yet nothing was done to protect these victims and help them is horrible. I just want to end the video with a quote from Ashley's family that said, quote, Our beautiful Ashley flew to England excited, alive and well, but sadly flew home in a box. And with that, that is a case of Ashley Wadsworth. I know it's so long, you guys. There's just so much information to go over and it's just really hard to listen to these details and all you want to do is just like jump through the screen and just like help Ashley and just like pull her out of this and just bring her back to her family. She just had so much to live for. She had such a bright future ahead of her. And it's just so sad that she went there looking for love and looking for happiness. But, you know, as her family said, 
she ended up coming home in a box. My thoughts and prayers go out to Ashley's family. As I mentioned, I will link resources in the description box down below and the documentary so you guys can watch it and, you know, show the family support through it. They just want to continue to spread awareness on Ashley's case and just hopefully help other victims going through this and prevent this from happening. I would love to know your thoughts on this down below. And if there's ever any other cases that you want me to cover, make sure to leave me a comment or submit it in my case suggestion form, which is linked in the description box down below again thank you guys so much for being here and watching today's video i appreciate you all so much and i will see you in the next video bye guys